It's great to be here. My name is Karen Rose. I'm, I serve as the Vice Dean of our College of Nursing, and I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our Buckeye Nursing Story Slam speakers this evening. I want to make sure I got that right. So let me get started. Our first speaker keeps finding her way back to our Buckeye family. She started at the James back in 2009 and is now in our PhD program. Her resilient spirit shines through in this story. Please help me welcome our first Buckeye Nursing Story Slam speaker, Portia Zaire. My house was pure chaos. We were fighting all the time, whether it was over clothes or who was going to get the last piece of chicken at dinner. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to stand out, I wanted to have my own voice, and I wanted to have my own space. I remember vividly being a young girl in home, and nine of us, or you know, maybe cousins are there too, and we're all watching TV, and everybody wants to sit on the couch, nobody wants to sit on the floor. But I decided that I was going to create my own little slice of personal space in the form of a cushion. Honey, don't cross that line. I don't want to feel your thigh touch me or your shoulder because this space was mine. I had to learn early how to stand out, how to have my own voice, and how to be seen and cared for. I had to fight for absolutely every single thing that I had because it didn't come easy for me. There were a lot of no's, don'ts, and can'ts. So I decided I'm going to have my own little motto. You know, what's the worst that can happen? They say no. Okay, no ain't never killed nobody. So my motto for the majority of my life is no has never killed me. Right? until it almost did. 2020, my boys, who at the time were 17 and 11, and my mom was there. My husband was at work, it was around 11.30. My oldest son came up stairs to make some french fries for he and his brother. And he put the oil on, and like most teenagers, he walked away. And I'm sitting in the family room doing whatever it was that I was doing, and I start to smell oil burning. And I can hear the sizzling pop, 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 pop in the pot. So I'm like, let me go on over here and see what's happening. So I get to the stove. I take the lid off the pot. And honey, that was not a good decision. When I get the oil, Flames just shot up. And it was like a rush. It pushed me back. And I am trying to, you know, smother it and fan it and all kinds of stuff. And it didn't work. It was so big and so fast that it caught hold to the microwave. Then it went to the cabinetry and then the walls. And I am trying so very unsuccessfully to put this fire out. I'm screaming, get out the house, call 911. There is a fire, help. And my boys come upstairs and they were able to get out through the garage door safely. And I don't know if you've ever been in a fire, but fire has a sound and it is scary. It is panic inducing to hear infrastructure crumbling under the weight of flames. And I was near panic until I realized, where's my mama? I haven't seen her. So I had to go and look for her. So I go to the back of the house, and homegirl back there getting her pocketbook. <laughs> I'm like, it is a fire. We got to go. You playing. So we are coming back through the hall, you know, in the direction of the fire. And that smoke was like right here above my head. It was so dark and heavy and thick. I couldn't see through it. I couldn't see around it. 
and it was starting to get me choked up. And my mom walks with a cane. So we had to get through this fire quickly. Bend down, hold your breath, and we gotta go. So we make it out, and now we're standing outside on the sidewalk. And the firemen are there, and they are doing what they do, right? They working in tandem, and they're getting this fire together, and my neighbors are outside, and they are um, talking to us, consoling us, what do you need? And after a while, though, it started to sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks because, you know, you are having this outer body experience. It's so surreal. I don't know what anybody was saying. I was standing there watching my house burning down. It wasn't until I was sitting on my neighbor's porch that I grasped the brevity of what just happened. I was watching the firemen bring things out of my home. Here comes the microwave, the stove, and here are the cabinets, and they are charred beyond belief. I look over to my boys and my mom, and everybody is completely still. They're sober, they're quiet, but you see on their faces what just happened. What are we going to do? How are we going to get through this? And I am sitting there, guys, in clothes that I would probably only wear in the comfort of my own home. So I'm like exposed. <laughs> <laughs> and I look down at my phone, which is the last piece of material possession that I have. And it is near dying. And that's when it hit me everything that I had worked so hard for, everything that I had carved out for myself, that cushion, everything that I thought I needed to survive was gone. I didn't know what to do next. There's no playbook that tells you what to do when you're chased from your home in the middle of the night from a fire. There was no meticulously laid plan about what steps you take. You're winging it, right? I was overwhelmed, but at the same time, I decided it didn't matter what needed to get done. It would get done just like every past had gotten done. By the grace of God, all was well and all would be well because no had never killed me. Every day after that fire for a year, I woke up unsettled. Our house was being repaired. And I just was thinking to myself, startled awake, is this a dream? Did this happen? Where am I? What am I doing? We were on the run that entire time. I call it being on the run, y'all, because we were in unfamiliar places with unfamiliar people doing very unfamiliar things. And it was overwhelming. And it was exhausting. And I had to figure out, even though we were in a great house with a wonderful landlord and pretty good homeowner's insurance, I was still unsettled. And I had to figure out, how am I going to get through this? How do you get through these unsettling feelings? Because everything you have at your disposal belongs down to the they belong. So I had to decide what do we do first? How do I wake up and show up for myself and for my family? How do I stay effective in my job? And how am I going to be successful in this PhD program? Guys, I started my PhD program a month, one month after my house caught fire. And I didn't know how I was going to get through it, but I decided, again, a decision. Every day I'm going to be persistently present. Every day I'm going to wake up and figure out what is it that I need to do today? How do I carve out a new slice of normal in the form of this cushion? How do I do that? I didn't want the weight of my circumstances and the weight of the no's that were being thrown at us at every turn. I didn't want that to deter me. I didn't want it to weigh me down. I didn't want to 
die there. And I am so glad that I didn't because if I would have caved, I couldn't stand here and tell you guys that I'll be sitting for my candidacy exam in August. What I started out to do in 2020, 2020, three years ago, I am so close to finishing. Life is going to do what life is going to do. How are you going to rise to the occasion? And I do believe that I am here tonight to tell you, because I know no has never killed me, no won't kill you either.